Good morning, afternoon. It's my pleasure to call to order the 12 p.m. City Council meeting of June 5th, 2017. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Mayor Go. Here. Vice Mayor Smith. I am here. Councilmember Rivera. Here. Councilmember Gonzalez. Here. Councilmember Weir. Councilmember Sullivan. And Councilmember Parlier. Here. To comply with the Brown Act, we'll receive public statements now. Please limit your comments to the department budget workshop items only at this time. All statements are given a three-minute time limit, 15 minutes per subject. Are there any public statements? Seeing none. Madam Clerk, next item, please. Under workshops, we have the department budget presentations. The first one from the city attorney's office. Thank you. Welcome. Good afternoon, Mayor, Council Members. Uh, to my right is Andrew Cadrill. He's been with our office for many years. I affectionately refer to him as Money Bags, but he's going to be helping me with the budget presentation this afternoon. I am Virginia Gennaro, your City Attorney. I'll be making the 2017-2018 presentation on behalf of the City Attorney's Office. Thank you. We start off first with our organizational chart for the primary purpose to point out two items. One, that there are two departments within the city that report directly to the mayor and the city council, that being the city manager's office and the city attorney's office. And also to show you that the internal composition of the city attorney's office has remained the same for several years. You can see we have three deputies, one associate, three secretaries, an accounting clerk. Uh, that's Mr. Cadrill to my right. A clerk typist, I think you're all familiar with her, Teresa Flores, and um, she is retiring as of July 7th of this year after over 10 years with the city of Bakersfield, 30 years in the workforce. We rely heavily on outside counsel because of that. And again, I think you're familiar with the three primary outside counsel firms. Clifford and Brown, of course, are under contract with the council through 2020. Martyrosian and Cohen that handle primarily our civil rights police cases. They are under contract through 2019 with an option in 2019-2020. In, uh, the Dwayne Morris folks have been handling our water litigation for decades, literally. Uh, that contract comes to an end at the conclusion of this fiscal year. The city manager has negotiated or renegotiated a rate with Dwayne Morris, and you should be receiving an annual contract um, on your June agenda the second meeting in June uh, for their renewal for the 2017-2018 fiscal year. The three remaining firms on that PowerPoint help us with the TRIP matters, the TRIP litigation matters, Kutak Rock, the Nossman firm, and Lewis Brisbo. Our mission has not changed. It's to represent and provide advice to the mayor, city council, department, and division heads, as well as staff. We do this in two areas primarily, the, uh, municipal as well as litigation. Municipal, we hope to provide you that advice which avoids the litigation. That doesn't always happen. And living in California, litigation sometimes is simply a matter of doing business. So when that happens, our job is to defend the city in court actions as well as those administrative hearings. In terms of our municipal accomplishments for the past fiscal year, you can see that this is somewhat of a busy slide, which shows that the council was extremely busy in the last fiscal year. You can see some remarkable things on the left-hand side that the city attorney's office worked with your staff and with the council. We came up with the food vending vehicle ordinance as well as the new youth commission ordinance, uh, senior refuse rebate, the new legislation on wireless communication facilities, and again, the administrative citations was a tremendous success last year. It raised over $40,000. We're, um, again, we're going to have that in full force and effect this year. And as you know, your council has now taken steps to expand that administrative citations. And uh, the city manager staff, as well as Rec and Parks, Code, and the police department, we're working on that, um, again, to add some additional violations to that process for the, hopefully the end of this year, uh, beginning of next calendar year. In terms of the resolutions of significant interest, uh, your council recertified the EIR for the Kern River Flow and Municipal Water Program. We had a couple of resolutions in support of uh, legislation, including the Senate Bill 5 on the prohibition of e-cigarettes. And we have remained um, engaged in the quiet zone renewal um, with uh, train stations, as well as the Kern River GSA. As Vice Mayor Smith knows, we 
cleared one hurdle with the GSA and now we're on to the, now we're on to the GSP. I think it's also a good time to note on this slide in terms of accomplishments that both myself and Richard Iger have been uh, participating in some public engagements, uh, including the Bakersfield Police Department crime-free multi-housing program, the GRC, we made a presentation on marijuana, and um, also appeared at the professional development conference this year that was sponsored by the Recreation and Parks Department. In the litigation arena, Again, even though we do rely heavily on outside counsel, and you'll see their accomplishments in just a minute, we, we do handle quite a few numbers in-house, and that number is, uh, is growing steadily. Uh, filed several marijuana matters over at the Kern County Superior Court. We continue to represent the police in the pitches motions. That is uh, hitting a high this year of close to, t of close to 200 pitches motions. Uh, code enforcement, uh, close to 60 abatement warrants and um, again have been working with finance and have collected for the city close to $95,000 in past due assessments. We've uh, certainly coordinated litigation with the outside trip council on 24th Street and the Centennial Corridor and again we do provide legal counsel to the Kern River GSA along with Jean McMurtry and Amelia Minnebrary Garay. Outside counsel again um, what more to say other than that they've been extremely successful, continue to be uh, successful. They've disposed of 27 civil cases this year, two uh, civil jury defense verdicts in favor of the city, and uh, closed 15 cases with absolutely no monies being paid by the city to either the plaintiff or the uh, plaintiff's attorneys. A new slide this year I thought you would find a little bit uh, interesting and colorful. Um, all of our deputies and associates bill their time as if they were in a private firm and uh, Mr. Cadrill calculates those and as you can see it, it, it's appropriate that a majority of the time is spent on the two largest departments within the city, that being Public Works and the Police Department. Most of the City Council and Mayor requests and um, staffing needs are billed either through the City Attorney's Office or, or the City Manager's Office. In terms of the budget, you've heard Mr. Hewatt in the city manager's office that the budget this year is close to 420 million. The city attorney's budget is less than 1% of that. Um, we're about a little over $3.6 million. And the significant change between last year and this year is that um, our budget is going up a little over $108,000. It is due primarily to the increase in salary and benefits, as well as the contract uh, tort legal defense with uh, the Mart Erosion firm as well as the Clifford and Brown firm uh, combined under contract. We owe them an additional 70. That's not 70 each. I believe it's uh, 20,000 to Clifford's office and 50,000 to the Mart Erosion firm which totals the 70,000. And so our goals for next year uh, is to continue again our litigation posture to maintain the municipal services to everyone and continue to handle as appropriate, those matters that you deem should be handled in-house. And with that, I'm available for any questions. No questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Lyman, is it Bakersfield? Welcome. I think I can see you. Let's try that. But we'll make it work. <laughs> Mayor and Council, good afternoon. I'm David Lyman with Visit Bakersfield. And I'm happy to offer this budget presentation for 2017 2018. The goal of Visit Bakersfield, which you've heard me say many times before when I come to my budget presentation, is to promote Bakersfield as a convention and visitor destination to increase transient occupancy tax and sales tax revenue. But again, what we really do is to help people spend their money. This is the team that makes it all happen. Team More to Explore, Wendy Zielsdorf, our Director of First Impressions, Matt Billingsley, our Sales Manager, and myself. We're the small group of people in the funky building down the street that makes big things happen. We were an even smaller group this year as we were without a marketing and events specialist from first part of February to mid-May. That's a 25% reduction in our staff resources and it came at one of our busiest times. 
You need to know that I have an outstanding team and they worked hard to keep visitors happy, to welcome them to our city, and yes, to help them spend their money. As you know, Bakersfield is the 52nd largest city in the United States by population, larger than places like Pitt, uh, St. Louis, Missouri, number 60, and Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, number 63. However, when we compare these cities by the size of the staff in their visitor center, Visit Pittsburgh has 53, Explore St. Louis has 81, and Visit Bakersfield has four, except for three months this year when we only had three. We serve visitors. The expression in the travel industry is that organizations like ours put heads in beds. And we do aim for that, but we also serve human resources professionals who are recruiting people to work here, people who are interviewing for jobs in Bakersfield, people who have just moved here, either because of a job or because they have recently retired and want to be close to family members. We deal with real estate agents who are gathering information for prospects, business owners who are considering opening a new location here, real estate investors who are considering investment opportunities in Bakersfield, and a variety of other types of referrals. We've become the Bakersfield Information Center. So while we still put heads in beds, our focus has also expanded to putting spouses in houses. Let me briefly share some of our recent accomplishments with you. We unveiled new elevator doors, door wraps in the city's 18th and I parking structure. Each of the garage's seven floors now sports a mini billboard spotlighting something to see and do in Bakersfield. We carried that same approach to the elevators on the pedestrian overcrossing behind the Rabobank Arena. Also around the arena, you will see some new colorful banners. We coordinated the production of these banners that spotlight the Bakersfield Symphony, Bakersfield Condors, Ice Center, and visit Bakersfield. During the wrestling championships, additional banners were installed to welcome CIF to Bakersfield. And because we have such a small staff, we rely upon local residents to be our ambassadors. After all, when friends and family come to visit, it is those local residents who need to know what there is to see and do. One way to reach them is through public presentations. As you can see from this list, we have been fortunate to spread the word to a variety of groups over the past year. If you are a member of a service organization or a community group and are looking for a speaker, please let me know. I'm always happy to use these groups to raise the visibility of our organization and the visibility of our city. Our newly redesigned website continues to attract new users. We have seen more than a 20% increase in first-time users to visit Bakersfield.com during the past year. In response to visitor requests, we created two new Bakersfield postcards. If you've ever tried to find postcards in Bakersfield, you will know that the pickings are rather slim. So we made our own, and they're free in our office. We also have free pens for people to write their messages to folks back home. We do not have free postage stamps. We also created an information card on how easy it is to access the Pacific Crest Trail from our office using Kern Transit. We learned that hikers take Amtrak to Bakersfield and take Kern Transit to the trail. So we wanted to spread the word that Bakersfield was easily accessible to hikers. We learned about this by seeing lots of people wearing backpacks standing in our lobby. We've had great success with our new arrangement to distribute our arrival guide. It was published in early 2016, and we contracted with certified folder display to have it available in distribution racks in Bakersfield hotels, RV parks, the Amtrak station, and other locations throughout our city. The result, we're going through our supply much quicker than we had expected. We also unveiled Art Trek, a walking tour of downtown public art. This project was a collaboration with the Arts Council of Kern and was funded by a grant from the Bakersfield Californian Foundation. No public funds were used in the production of the Art Trek brochure. Once again, we wrote the text for the quality of life section of the market overview produced by Kern Economic Development Corporation. We also provide photos that were used throughout this publication. Also, once again, we wrote the Kern County section for the Central Valley Tourism Association's Visitor's Guide. Visit Bakersfield is the only CVTA member in Kern County, and this is the third year we've provided the copy and photos for the Kern County section. I'm also pleased to tell you that our sales manager, Matt Billingsley, is the president of CVTA. This means that we have a seat at the table of this group that promotes travel and tourism in the Central Valley, and Bakersfield is playing a prominent role. This membership also leverages our limited trade show dollars. On a few occasions, CVTA has paid a large portion of Mr. Billingsley's costs to attend some prominent shows, ones that we would not otherwise be able to afford. I mentioned earlier we continue to raise our visibility, and one way to do that is with positive local press, whether it's from television, radio, articles, and local publications continue to get the positive word out about Bakersfield. 
We were pleased to host a MegaFam or a familiarization tour with some of Mexico's top travel professionals visiting us in February. For 23 hours, we helped them experience the tastes, tours, and thrills of Bakersfield. Their goal was to better describe those experiences firsthand to potential clients back home. We assisted Visit Bakersfield in the production of one of their Hidden Gems video series. This one focused on the Bakersfield sound and was available on YouTube, our webpage, our Facebook page, and many other platforms. We facilitated a number of events during the past year to put those heads in beds. Those events will attract more than 87,000 delegates in this or future fiscal years. Those delegates will book more than 59,000 hotel room nights, and the estimated economic impact of those events that we facilitated is greater than $23 million. The largest of these events is the Jehovah's Witness Watchtower Convention. They meet seven weekends over the summer, and each one attracts 6,000 delegates to Bakersfield. We again were the sponsor for the media luncheon at the Winter Showdown at Kern County Raceway Park. The Sweet Adelines held their annual convention here in spring, and we have this group booked here through the year 2021. We brought in six regional softball tournaments that were held at Mesa Marin Sports Complex and other locations throughout Bakersfield. The Western Street Rod Nationals were back at Kern County Fairgrounds in April for their 31st year, and Mayor Goh attended the award ceremony and addressed the group. Also at the Kern County Fairgrounds was the Bakersfield Fiesta, a large square dancing extravaganza meeting here for its 51st year. We sponsored the Bakersfield Open at the Bakersfield Country Club for the second year. We sponsored the CIF Boys Wrestling Championships at Robo Bank Arena, and this event is booked here through 2020. Speaking of CIF, we had an ad in the program that was a 50% off coupon to encourage visitors to go to one of our four local museums. Again, a way to help them spend their money while they were in Bakersfield. We continue to coordinate meetings among our local museums to discuss promotional efforts and share information to attract visitors. We brought a new agreement with the Greater Bakersfield Convention and Visitors Bureau to you in, in November. That agreement extends the current arrangement through June 2027 and continues a successful partnership for the city to run the day-to-day -day operations of the CVB. We've also seen an upward trend in both the number of local hotel rooms sold and the number amount of revenue generated among Bakersfield hotels. Overall, these figures are running ahead of last year's numbers. More hotel rooms mean more people are staying in Bakersfield hotels. More revenue means more TOT revenue flowing to the city of Bakersfield. We monitor these data closely and are cautiously optimistic with the numbers that we have been seeing. In terms of our budget request, a friendly reminder that we are funded solely by transient occupancy tax revenues. We receive no general fund monies. Our budget request is $714,375, and that breaks down as follows. $434,164 for salaries and benefits, which is a 6.2% increase over the current fiscal year. Our operating budget remains the same at $280,000, $280,211. The city manager's office requested a flat operating budget be submitted, and I'm pleased to tell you that it is flat to the same, to the dollar, as last year. As you can see from this table, it is a 7% reduction over two years ago. Overall, our budget request is $714,375, which is 3.7% higher than last year. So, how are we doing? Let's take a look at our service level indicators. The estimated economic impact of events booked during the current fiscal year to be realized in this or future fiscal years will remain the same at $23 million. Room nights booked during the current fiscal year to be realized in this or future fiscal years will be down slightly to 59,000. Delegates from meetings booked during the current fiscal year who will stay during this or future fiscal years will also be down slightly to 87,000. The number of trade shows we will attend to promote Bakersfield will remain the same at nine. And the number of information requests that we respond to will increase to $1,500. 1,500, <laughs> those are a lot of requests, but that is what we do. And not all of these requests are what you might expect. We get all kinds of questions like, is highway such and such closed? When will that highway reopen? Will it be snowing in the grapevine when I come to visit Bakersfield in February? Where can I buy Vegemite? Um, I'm in Australia and I'm coming to Bakersfield to write an article on country music. Who can I talk to? Now, many of these questions we receive have absolutely positively nothing to do with putting heads in beds or spouses in houses. But we pride ourselves in being able to answer just about any question somebody has about Bakersfield. Our action plan for the coming year remains the same. 
target local residents who belong to professional organizations that hold regular, regular, regional, and statewide meetings, bring them to Bakersfield. Continue to promote Bakersfield as a point of destination for both group and individual travel. And focus on value-added tourism. This means attracting new events and visitors to Bakersfield, retaining existing events and visitors, and increasing the spending and tax revenue generated by those existing events and visitors. So what can you expect to see in the new year? Well, we will be updating our popular arrival guide and hope to have it available this summer. Once again, it will be distributed to more than 80 locations around Bakersfield, including hotels and RV parks. We want to promote Holiday Lights at Calm to a larger regional audience to capitalize on it being named one of the top 10 holiday light shows in the West by the Los Angeles Times last year. A Hyatt Place on Coffee Road will open and it will be the first Hyatt property in Bakersfield. Renovations will open later this year on the Double Tree by Hilton, which is Bakersfield's largest hotel. The Fairfield Inn and Suites will open near Meadowsfield Airport and it will be the first Fairfield property in this area. Also, our new marketing and event specialist will be on board. His first day was May 15th. His name is Joe Simpson, and we're looking forward to returning to our full staffing level. With the hiring of Mr. Simpson, watch for upgraded design of all our promotional materials and an increased social media presence. In closing, I want to leave you with a personal observation. Being in the travel business, I always stop by visitor centers whenever I travel. In September and October, I stop by visitor centers in two states and four provinces. In each one, they had more people working at the counter, they had more flat screen television monitors, they had other technical wizardry more than we do, and in every one of them, no one spoke to me when I walked in. No greeting, no welcome, no acknowledgement in any way, regardless of the lingua franca was English or French. If I asked a question, I received a polite response, but I always, always had to begin the conversation. Contrast that with our office. At Visit Bakersfield, visitors are immediately greeted, welcomed, and engaged in conversation. So as someone who has personally visited visitor centers in four provinces and two states, I'm here to tell you, no one does welcome like we do. I thank you for your time today, and I'm happy to hear your questions. Councilmember Sullivan. David, A plus. Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful presentation, David. Yeah. Um, good information, very exciting. And I, I, I was realizing the location. It was important uh, when you first secured that location, but will continue to be just more and more perfect because of all of the activity down there. Of course, our hotel and, and Mill Creek and, and uh, just our entertainment around there. So. Very exciting, uh, and you, you just, of course, do a good job, and certainly enthusiasm, and makes it everything very exciting, so thank you. Thank you, it's all because of my staff. I will pass your comments along, thank you. Councilmember Gonzalez. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, yes, very good job. This is exciting stuff. Um, always like to see Bakersfield uh, shine, and certainly you do a great job of helping us promote what, what's good about our city. Um, and I was really excited to see on the almost last slide, third to last slide, um, increased social media presence is something that you and I talked about yes. in our meet and greet when I first came on the council. It's something that I think is an area where we, we ought to focus on. Um, certainly visitors guides are really important and um, other materials, but um, the social media platforms are uh, very popular. They're used by many people. Um, and I think that uh, we, would be, we would be in a good position to really utilize those very effectively and um, creatively uh, so that we can uh, continue to highlight Bakersfield in a more um, exciting way. So I'm excited to hear about your strategies on social media. Thank you. Mayor Go, Council Member Gonzalez. Yes, I agree. Um, our new marketing event specialist has a lot of background in that. And so in the next few months, you will start seeing things rolling out and I'll be happy to share those with you. It'll be very exciting. Vice Mayor Smith. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, David. Uh, I just wanted to comment on the Pacific Crest Trail info card. I actually seen some backpackers this morning when mm -hmm. I was coming in and uh, ran into a couple a week ago that were from Sweden and were backpacking the Pacific Crest Trail. And I thought, well, how do they even get here? How do they know about it? So that's great. Appreciate it. Thank Thanks you. for your work.
No one else. Well, you certainly win the award for pretty, but we haven't seen uh, <laughs> recreation parks yet, so who, who knows? Uh, thank you very, very much, uh, oh, yeah. Mr. Lyman. Thank you. And thank you for doing more with less. I, I see that enthusiasm and uh, small budget, but uh, you're, you're certainly getting out there with the message. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. And next we have Ms. Kitchen. So while Ms. Kitchen is coming up, um, Mr. Naro, uh, we didn't comment on yours, but uh, what I want to say is that you are always so responsive, and I really, really appreciate that, that uh, all my requests are handled with such uh, efficiency, uh, knowledge, and responsiveness. So thank you very much. Ms. Kitchen. Thank you, Mary Go. Uh, first, I want to say that I'm responsible. Community development is responsible for David's 25% reduction. I think he may have already left, but here she is. I snagged her. Uh, this is Misty Eaton, our new business manager, and we were happy to promote her and bring her over to our department. And she's been doing excellent and was trained well by David, so we appreciate that. Uh, okay, so to begin, uh, here is an overview of our organizational chart. Uh, the Community Development Department's mission is to guide and facilitate good quality development throughout the city, and that even includes inspecting those houses for spouses and the hotels that put heads into beds. Uh, so this is an overview that shows the breakdown. There's two distinct divisions in the department. One is the planning division that has four separate units, as shown there, and the other is the building division that has three separate units, as shown there and I'm accompanied also by Phil Burns, our building director. And I'll get into those details uh, in just a moment. This is an overview of the staffing levels for the Community Development Department. As you can see for the last six years, it's been relatively flat with minimal increases in staffing and even some decreases over the last two years. And this is an overview of the Community Development Department's budget in comparison with the top 10 comparable jurisdictions. As you can see, we are the second largest uh, of our top 10 cities, but only have the eighth largest budget. So we do a lot with a little, and that's evidenced here. And this is a comparison of how that budget compares with our activity. Uh, that blue line on the top is the number of building inspections over the last several years from 2013, uh, 12, 13 to current. As you can see, there's been a steady increase. The darker blue line is overall permit activity with planning and building permits, also at an increase. And the orange line is the code enforcement uh, cases. There has been a slight decrease there, but that has been due to the recent uh, beginning of the river sweeps and substantial building sweeps with the police department. And those river sweeps do happen about three times a year for two to three days, and they take 90% of the code enforcement staff out of the normal circulation, and they're focused on that. So that accounts for the slight decrease in the number of calls. Uh, however, there has been a stable increase in the workload. And then the yellow line at the bottom shows the number of staff. As you can see, that's been flat in correlation with the workload. Uh, so going into a little more detail about the planning division, or I'm sorry, the overall budget for the department. Uh, as Mr. Lyman indicated, we did receive instruction to have a flat operating budget, and the department has done so. You'll see a slight increase in the operating layout here, uh, and that is simply due to the fact that the uh, CDBG funding that's normally allocated to capital improvement projects, which is a public works budget line item, was shifted this year to public services, which is a community development item. Uh, so that was kind of an anomaly, but without that, we would have shown an overall decrease of by about 1% for the whole department. Okay, so going into a little more detail about the planning division. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, it has four distinct units. The first is the current planning division that has three staff, or four staff, and they oversee and administer the planning commission meetings. They do all of the subdivision activities. They're preparing our new habitat conservation plan uh, and a number of other projects as shown there. The advanced planning unit has three staff. They oversee the existing habitat conservation plan. They do general plan maintenance and updates. They prepare all of our annexations, and they also do special projects. 
The third planning unit is the permitting and site planning. Uh, this is what I call the front door of our department. This is on the first floor, quite literally near the front door, and it's the, they're the first faces that people see when they walk into our building. Uh, they provide assistance from, ranging from what is my zoning, what can I do on my property, all the way to how do I go through a zone change or a conditional use permit process, how do I get a building plan. And that, that unit also oversees the Board of Zoning Adjustment. The fourth unit is a new addition to the department as of 2013. Uh, this was formerly the Community and Economic Development Department. That was its own standalone department for many years. Uh, but in 2013, it was merged into Community Development. And that oversees our HUD program, Redevelopment Successor Agency activities, Economic Development activities, and more. This is just a sub breakdown of the planning divisions. Um, Budget, same situation here. Operating is generally flat with the exception of that CDBG transfer and slight increases in salaries, uh, costs, um, even with the decrease and the underfilling of positions. So to go into a little detail about some of the accomplishments for the planning division, the high-speed rail station area plan is a big one. And your council's been briefed on this several times, so I won't go into too many details, but we completed extensive community outreach. We completed existing condition reports, market analysis, and a 30-year phase development strategy that looks like this. And what this is is a three-part vision plan that is a framework that will help guide future planning efforts for downtown Bakersfield. And then we also came uh, up with some conceptual modeling with our consultant. And this, again, is just ways to visualize that vision. And these things came as a result of the public input that we received during the visioning process. Another accomplishment was reinitiation of annexations. Five annexations were completed, as shown in orange on that map. It's a little difficult to see, uh, but it was about 61 acres. There are nine additional pending annexations for a total of 780 acres. And we're also working together with LAFCO and others to pursue annexation of several county islands throughout the city. Some of the big projects that were permitted and constructed this year include the Artisan Square Shopping Center, which is a new development out at Allen and Brimhall Road. Uh, last year, we went through an extensive public hearing process to get that built, and now I've been going through the building plan and site plan review process, and it's been a success. Uh, just this last week or two ago, the Habit Burger and Dunkin' Donuts opened. First time Dunkin' Donuts has been in Bakersfield in several years. And we also permitted the Bakersfield Commons Project. This was a 345,000 square foot lifestyle center with retail, hospital, offices, hotels, and 865 multifamily units. And I've been working closely with the developer, and they've just let me know that they are in the last stages of negotiations with a movie theater and a grocery outlet that has not yet had a presence in Bakersfield. And it's a high-end grocer uh, with a lot of organic and holistic foods. I can't name names, though. Uh, and then there's also going to be several new restaurants that do not yet have a presence in Bakersfield, but that will be much welcomed. So we're looking forward to seeing that, and they've indicated that they will be coming in for grading permits by the end of this calendar year. So that's an exciting development. Uh, we also permitted several new multifamily developments throughout the city, including 176 new condominiums at Old Farm in Nariega. And moving kind of down through this area of town at Stockdale and Allen, uh, 93,000 square foot of new commercial was approved for that intersection, which will help finish off that long vacant corner uh, of that area. And then just to the west of that, we had the groundbreakings uh, in March for the new Valley Children's Hospital. And at final build out, this will be a 100,000 square foot medical clinic which will help provide much needed services to children throughout the community. We've also permitted uh, 160 beds of skilled nursing, senior, and assisted living facilities throughout the city. Two of them are shown here, one on the west end at Hageman and Knudsen, another, much, another long vacant property that will be infilled, and then over on the east side of town at Bernard and Oswell. 
Another fun project that was permitted this year was a pocket park at Niles and Monterey. This is a private uh, venture that will put a new park in a much needed area and it will benefit the residents of the Old Town Kern uh, in Niles Street area and we're excited to see this one come online. We also facilitated the reuse of several vacant buildings throughout town. Uh, one of them is the former grocery building at Callaway and Rosedale Highway. We processed a conditional use permit to authorize a studio movie grill at that location and construction is underway and that building will be completely refaced to include outdoor seating and patio area and restaurant and movie services on the inside. And then on the bottom of that slide is the former CompUSA building that has been vacant for some time, uh, save for the occasional Halloween store. That is turning into a Planet Fitness and we expect that final building approvals will be issued in the next several months. They're very close. Uh, another one is the former Price Club building over on Buck Owens. We processed a conditional use permit for a 50,000 square foot indoor go-kart track, which is something new and fun. Uh, and that area is continuing to be redeveloped with a number of entertainment uses. And then of course, we also maintained our Metropolitan Bakersfield Habitat Conservation Plan and ensured that development could continue in compliance with the biological requirements of both the state and federal agencies. And we also reinitiated efforts to prepare the new Habitat Conservation Plan that will take the place of this one when it expires in 2019. And then we also applied for a federal grant from the EPA and we just received word last week that we did receive the grant and it's for $300,000 to allow us to hire a consultant to take an inventory of properties throughout the city that could qualify for rehabilitation and future redevelopment funds. So this is a positive step and another tool that we can use to reinvigorate property throughout the city. Our goals for next year are to complete the high-speed rail station area plan vision and EIR and then to begin implementation of that plan, which is very important as many of the council goals that you adopted uh, last month were uh, originated with this planning effort. So we're excited to implement those. We will also continue to monitor the state's work on their uh, high-speed rail environmental analysis for the locally generated alternative. We will continue progress on a future update to the general plan, which has not been comprehensively updated since 2004. And we will continue to work with developers in reactivating the existing vested tentative maps. Uh, this map shows that all of the areas in blue are properties that have been approved for subdivision, for single family tracks mostly. Uh, there's 242 of those maps out there to total about 35,000 paper lots that are ready but have not yet been recorded. And we anticipate more and more of those will come online. We've seen a resurgence in activity there. And then the Housing and Economic Development Unit has been very busy this year as well. Uh, they continued development of the policies to implement the Economic Opportunity Area Plan when it becomes activated in the future. They began construction of the Creekview Villas Phase 2, which is actually the third building and will be seven additional units uh, in the South Mill Creek area, and those are anticipated to be ready in August. So that's coming right up, and we hope to begin sales soon. We also completed construction of the Mill Creek Village Senior Housing, which brought 62 new and affordable units of senior housing to the Mill Creek area. And we've been providing assistance to groups who are interested in uh, pursuing a downtown business improvement district. We are working with the other departments, including Public Works, to de develop a downtown parking strategy. And we're continuing to market the PQ commercial property and other city-owned properties throughout the city. Goals for the Housing and Economic Development Unit are to continue development of the Mills Act program, assist other departments with the Transformative Climate Communities Grant application, continue to support the Historic Preservation Commission, continue to monitor and report on CDBG economic development projects and more. 
And just a quick breakdown of those HUD funds. We've already gone into this in detail, uh, but we do expect that our allocation will be to the tune of about $5 million from HUD this year, and that shows how it would be broken down. And to further drill down into that, this is where the actual HUD monies go by departments. You can see the majority goes to capital improvement projects and then new construction assistance. And this is a breakdown of what those projects are. Uh, as you can see, they're important curb gutter and sidewalk projects through uh, low to moderate income areas of the city. Now to talk about the building division a little bit. This is a breakdown of how that division works. It also has three distinct units within it. The first is the construction unit. Those are the inspectors that go out uh, each day and inspect every grading and building permit throughout the city. They're averaging about 150 inspections per day uh, with just 11 uh, employees. So they are hard at work from sunup to sundown. And then the permitting and plan checking unit, uh, those are the people that actually plan, check all the technical plans and drawings that come in, provide feedback, issue building permits. And then of course the code enforcement division responds to uh, calls from the community in order to ensure the health, safety, and welfare of uh, Bakersfield. Here's just a brief breakdown of the budget for that division, also flat. Uh, reductions overall, uh, again, due to various retirements and then refilling of those positions with newer staff. And here's an overview of the building permit activity. Uh, you can see that overall there was a slight decrease in the number of building permits last year. However, that's due to solar activities. And to show that uh, a little more, you can see that in the, on the housing side, there was an increase in housing permits and we've actually seen uh, some strength in that area. And the industry has indicated to us that they expect the next year will be steady and look very similar to this last year. And we've even seen a few spec homes being built throughout the city for the first time since about 2008. So that seems to be a positive sign. And a little more detail on that residential activity. Overall, it's down by about 1,000 permits. And we believe the reason for that is that in 2015, the federal tax credit was due to expire, so that resulted in a rush uh, for the 15-16 year. However, it was extended all the way out through 2021, so we may see uh, a stable or gradual slight increase over the next several years. So accomplishments for the building department, uh, the adoption of the 2016 California Building Code, and as I mentioned, our daily building inspections are averaging between 140 to 200 per day, and solar activity does continue. And we also completed inspections of construction for the Mill Creek Village Affordable Housing Project and that parking structure that will benefit the Central Park and downtown area. And we've also continued with riverbed encampment abatement program activities. And here's a breakdown of the Code Enforcement Division's accomplishments over 8,300 calls and cases processed last year. As you can see, a majority of those were related to property maintenance and zoning violations. And then goals for next year for the building division are to complete inspections for the pending construction activities of some of our bigger projects, uh, such as the Valley Children's Hospital, the Hyatt Place Hotel that Mr. Lyman mentioned, and the Studio Movie Grill. We're also hoping to complete the last and small phase of the remodel to our building on the first floor. There's a conference room that uh, is in need of a little rehab. And then lastly, we plan to prepare for the anticipated increase in commercial grading and building plan inspections due to the Bakersfield Commons coming online, potentially the East Hills Mall rehabilitation and others. Uh, so with that, that completes the presentation and we are here if you have any questions. Thank you. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Kitchen. Uh, first, I just want to say that the new entrance and the remodel that was done a year or so ago, it, it really changes the feel when you walk into the building department, and, and it's, it's great. And so we appreciate that. Uh, the high-speed rail plan that I know you spent a lot of time on and, and public input. Uh, look forward to the implementation, and, and you know, it was great to get the community input. 
Uh, as you went down the list of projects, I, I just excited that most of them were in Ward 4, the Artisan Square, the Commons, the multifamily projects, Dr. L. Allen, Steve Moo. Ward 4 is doing good. We want everybody to know that. <laughs> a, a little piece of the Commons is in Ward 3. <laughs> we'll take we'll ta <laughs> Thank you very much. Appreciate your work. Councilmember Sullivan. Oh, well, with, with starting the grading, Jackie, A-plus for you, too, was wonderful. And yes, it's exciting to hear of all the new businesses that are coming to town. It'll be fun to uh, actually hear what they are. And Bob, yes, you're doing well. Uh, uh, slow in coming. You've gotten a late start at, way out there in Ward 4, but uh, happy, happy for your part of town. So anyway, exciting. Yeah, wonderful. Well done, Jackie. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Kitchen. And next, Ms. Hooper. Oh. Good afternoon. I'm Diane Hoover, Director of Recreation and Parks for the City of Bakersfield, and I'm happy to be here this afternoon. I have with me several staff members that uh, certainly I don't do this alone. I have many, many people supporting me, including you, so much appreciated. I have the, the business manager is Raj Mystery, and I have the park superintendent, Ken Trone, planning and construction manager, Devin Doherty, and our assistant director, Darren Budak. So the city of Bakersfield Recreation and Parks enhances the quality of life through a variety of parks, programs, and partnerships. Last year, we completed the improvements to Garden Park. And uh, the, what you see right there, you might not ever saw it before in a playground because it's kind of new. But each one of those uh, items are a musical instrument. So they play the piano, the drums, and the guitar. And it sounds just like guitar, drums, and piano. And that's at Garden Park. We liked it so much that we put it in uh, Wayside Park as well. And Wayside Park is a very large uh, park development that also has the full ADA accessibility at Wayside now. We also uh, put a dog park in Ward 3 at Mace Marin, and it was much requested and much needed. We expanded the parking lot at Mace Marin and then uh, also the dog park. We completed, finally, after a three-year project, the uh, slides at McMurtry Aquatic Center, and we did have the ribbon cutting the, the Friday before Memorial Day, and Memorial Day, it was packed. Standing room only. Uh, we had to close the pool due to capacity, but as soon as somebody left, we opened it right back up. So it was a very good day. And today, in five minutes, McMurtry opens again to the public for a general swim. We also completed all of the MaxiCom installations at the 59 parks. And we had enough money to include 18 streetscapes. And what you see in the picture there is the weather station. So we have three weather stations that collect the information and then sends it out uh, electronically to the different uh, controls throughout the city. We replaced uh, several uh, streetscape areas with wood chips. Uh, this is at Rosedale. We also did the Auto Mall and the Valley Plaza. And uh, Council Member Parlier kept us going on that. But he also uh, thanked all the staff for all their hard work with donuts on Friday. So that was much appreciated, and thank you for that. We uh, uh, also knew that through the drought and uh, various things that happened in the last couple years, that we needed to enhance many of the monument areas and entry areas into the developments. Uh, this is an example of before and after plantings at uh, Hayworth and Grand Lakes. And we did uh, also improved uh, Juetta Avenue 
uh, and we have more to go. We realize that, and it's a uh, year-long process of getting these plant materials in. It's very difficult to put them in uh, now when the weather is very hot, so we try to do these plantings in the spring and the fall. And we have several partnerships that I will uh, just enhance a few of them right now. One of them is certainly with the Tree Foundation of Kern, and um, Councilmember Gonzalez is the chair of that or president of that foundation, so we appreciate his support. And through uh, some of our tree removals that we had to do at Campus Park North, the neighborhood came out in full force and said, no more. And uh, so we worked with the Tree Foundation and PG&E and uh, were able to replace some of the trees that we had to remove. Other partnerships in include uh, our uh, Kaiser Permanente, who was here uh, last week at the council meeting to present their check. And uh, they have supported this for the last four years and they have committed to the next two years. And they help with uh, reduced swim lessons, re reduced cost swim lessons, and swim passes. First Five Kern and USA Swimming also provide grants for us to offer this to the community. Kern Trophy donates softball trophies for each of our seasons and our winners of the um, softball tournament uh, leagues. Bike Bakersfield, we, we certainly partner with them with some of the programs that they offer throughout the year. The, the full moon rides is every month, and it, it's a great program. They also help us with special events, and they'll be there at the 4th of July to help us uh, with bike valet for that as well. Spectrum uh, used to be called Bright House Networks Amphitheater, but now it's Spectrum, and they help uh, sponsor the Movies in the Park series. We have various fitness instructors that we work with the uh, Kern Health Department, and they provide free instructors throughout the parks on uh, various days. The DBA does the third Thursdays at Central Park at Mill Creek, and the Camp Out Against Cancer is held at the Bakersfield Sports Village. They've done that for the past three years, and they'll continue to do that. And the Bakersfield Symphony offers uh, Beale Band concerts for free in every uh, Sunday in June. We also have sponsorships through the Stay Focused Ministries and the Martin, at the Martin Luther King Community Center. We did the egg hunt this year and thank you, uh, Mayor Go, for coming out and supporting that event. And also uh, Assembly Member Rudy Salas donated some prizes for that event. The Good Neighbor Festival is a Southeast partnership that they meet year round to have a great event in early October at the Martin Luther King Community Center and the park. The Department of Recreation and Parks has three different distinct divisions. The largest of those divisions is the park division and it's the only division that we have a superintendent and that is the majority of our budget, it's the majority of our staffing. We have six different areas that are, uh, we divided the city in for maintenance. And included in those areas are the tree section and also the craft workers for the repair and maintenance of some of the vandalism and various things that happen throughout the year. In the recreation division, we have four areas the sports and adaptive sports. Then we also have the, community, the uh, Silver Creek Community Center with Saunders and special events, the Dr. Martin Luther King Community Center, and then aquatics that oversees all of four of our pools and also the spray parks. In the administrative division, we have the planning uh, area, the financial support, and of course, uh, administrative uh, clerical work as well. My, the proposed budget for 2017-18 is just over $19 million. It's just a slight increase from last year because we're all following instructions of keeping a flat budget. And the increase is basically due to a 10% increase in our water. Now that the water restrictions have been uh, reduced and lifted, 
We are still holding with uh, the three-day watering schedule as much as possible, but we also increase the hours at the spray parks, so we know that's going to be a slight increase in the water. We also have a little bit of increase in the minimum wage, and so that affects our part-time staff for now. But as this minimum wage keeps continuing, we'll be back for a uh, more increase in that type of uh, that area. Uh, our staffing complement remains the same at 146 employees full-time does not include our part-time staff. So to, to kind of uh, tell you what is happening in uh, recreation and parks, as the community grows and, and as the ones before us and the ones after us will indicate the growth in the city, we continue to grow in attendance in our recreation programming. Uh, even though our, our staffing is flat, we do serve more and more people throughout the community as the community grows. And in our parks division, uh, each employee that has maintenance responsibilities has increased their areas because we've taken on more streetscapes and their area tends to grow. So this year, it, it's a, a challenge. We've never had 14.34 uh, acres per employee to maintain and um, we'll just continue to try to meet those challenges. Some of the additional work besides the streetscapes and the parks is that we help keep the weeds off the West Side Parkway and we do that on a almost a bi-weekly basis twice a month. We also are the uh, one department that goes to some of the homeless camp camps and cleans those up. Well, there are many other departments that get involved, but we have the staffing and the equipment to be able to do the majority of that. And we have, as you know, through several reports I've submitted throughout the year, that we've had to reduce almost, uh, uh, remove almost 4,000 trees to date. And there's a few more to do, as you can see in some of these pictures. So that's the kind of the the good, the bad, and the ugly. And now we're going to the good again and the really good. So the proposed um, uh, grant that we have out there, we won't hear about this grant until August, but we are hoping for uh, to receive this grant to replace over 800 trees. And we did get notification just a couple weeks ago through the F Tree Foundation of Kern that they did receive the CAL FIRE grant which will help us with uh, 18 different parks and 10 trees in each of those parks. Some of the programs that you may not be aware of, McMurtry Aquatic Center is a year-round recreation facility. We hold programs like aqua aerobics, we even teach kayaking there, scuba diving, and we have not only the swim team that we have in the summer, but we uh, contracted out with the Kern High School District for their swim teams as well. And we have nine spray parks throughout the city, and they are heavily used, as you know, if you drive by any one of them during an afternoon in the summer, you will see hundreds of kids there, and families come and make it a day with a picnic and uh, have a great event there. And our Mesa Marin Sports Complex is very popular now. It's a destination for some of the tournaments that are being held regionally with the uh, women's uh, softball tournaments, and then our leagues are year-round. We only have about a six-week period where we can redo all of the fields out there for play year-round. And at the Saunders multi-use facility, we have inline hockey. We have also an indoor, uh, it's a soccer, it's kind of an indoor soccer uh, facility. And uh, recently, on Sunday evenings, we have lacrosse. And it's full almost every night. We also have the, uh, the women's, um, when they, where they do their uh, circle skate thing. What's it called? Roller derby. We have that every once in a while. I can never remember the name of it. It's quite a spectacle to see. It's uh, entertaining. <laughs> 
Uh, so one of the uh, parks that has uh, uh, been underway has met now all of the requirements for a park. It's a developer-built park, SNS Homes, and uh, hopefully this will get going uh, soon. The um, uh, Ward 5 a council member, once that person is elected and on board, will have a public meeting in uh, August or September to the residents there. They're very excited about this park. And then SNS will uh, provide the timeline of the park. So some of the projects that we have funded, uh, Jackie had mentioned the CDBG. So at Lowell Park, we'll have a picnic area there, rehabilitation, and ADA improvements. Also ADA improvements for the playground and around the park at Stern. And uh, Jastro Park will uh, get better uh, revised shade structures and ADA improvements. And then the Park Improvement Fund for Phase 4 of the Bakersfield Sports Village and Phase 2 of the Mace Marin Sports Complex. So we're here to answer any questions. This picture was used as a nationally accepted calendar and then all the other pictures that we have of many of our activities throughout the year. Thank you. Vice Mayor Smith. Thank you, Ms. Hoover. I do believe parks make life better. I love ah, the yes. quality of life and, <laughs> and it's a great amenity and, and it really makes Bakersfield what it is, our great park system. I, I appreciate you. them and I appreciate your work. Uh, a couple comments. I, as I came by Beach Park today, it looked awful dry, and so I'm not sure if you need to double check it, but I went by quite a few other parks, and none of them look as dry as that one. So, Which one? Beach Park. Beach Park. Okay. Uh, yes, we, uh, yes, we do have a well problem at Beach Park. Uh, we use an old, old well, and it, it is under construction right now, and we hope to have that up and running in the next couple weeks. But yes, you're... You were right about Beach Park. So two more weeks it's, without water? Uh, no, we water it by hand now oh, okay. to, to help with that park. Uh, and, it, and it's my annual time to talk to you about the Polo Grounds fence. And I noticed yesterday uh, on Callaway Drive, just south of the uh, new commercial center there, there was a post out and some rails and stuff. So if you could take a look at that, I would appreciate it. Uh, you mentioned all your partnerships, and I had talked to you during the year about your uh, CSUB fitness instructors and stuff, and you didn't mention them, so I wanted Oh, to yes, that. I do need to mention those. Those are, uh, that's an excellent partnership that yeah. we have with CSUB. You're right. Yeah, appreciate them. Uh, and then I wanted to ask you about, we'd, we'd met out uh, on the area between Riverwalk and Era Park, and uh, if we can work towards a connection for those two parks. There's a bike path that goes there, and we talked about different solutions, and so I'd like to see you come up with something there. And it's great to have the spray parks going again. Appreciate that, so thank you for all your work. Thank you. Councilmember Sullivan. Thank you, Diane. Thank you, Mayor. Great presentation, Diane. It's always exciting to see all that's going on. And it just came to me that people used to be able to say, oh, ho-hum nothing to do not not so we we know better so just a lot to do and and uh so yes my great grandchildren are enjoying they live up in the northeast part of town so they're enjoying seaman uh spray park and yeah those are just uh, very nice for families um diane i was looking for that last um picture that you showed that won the award where where was that that was uh, we submitted that picture to the National Recreation and Park Association for their annual calendar that gets distributed throughout the United States and that is featured in I believe it was February where is that it's a count we can make sure you get oh we're oh that oh, I'm sorry where is that? <laughs> That's the park at Riverwalk. Oh, it's a morning. It's a sunrise. I see. Oh my goodness, that is that. I, I'm not surprised that won the award. It's beautiful. Award four. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised. I think we're gonna have to spread out the awards a little though. bit more, Council Member. Right. Yeah. And you know, I was thinking also years ago. I think it used to be Parks and Recreation. Now it's Rick. 
Is is that correct? Years ago. Well, and, since and, since I've been here, it's always been recreation well, parks. With, well, with you're good thinking reason. of the TV show, probably. Well, <laughs> county is the other one. Maybe, maybe. But anyway, certainly appropriate for it to be recreation and parks because there's a lot going on. Thank you, Diane. Councilmember Sullivan. Just real quickly, we. We retitled it because we'd always had great parks, but we, uh, there was a point in the city's history when our recreation programs needed enhancement, and we wanted people to be aware of our yes. concern with that issue. Yes, so, I thought thank so. You for noticing. Approximately what year was that? Was that after you arrived, early 90s? Um, 15 years ago, maybe? I've been here 12, so it was yeah, before me. Around that. <laughs> Could it be it? Uh huh. Great. Okay, well. Perfect name, Recreation and Parks. Thank you, Diane. Thank you. Council Member Gonzalez. Great. Uh, I would just want to echo the comments of my colleagues and great job to your team, Diane, uh, you. doing wonderful things for our community. Um, I, I noticed in the budget that there were roughly 4,400 reservations for parks and facilities. And I wondered where that was captured in the budget in terms of the revenues generated through those, through those park reservations. Councilmember oh, Gonzalez, it's, yeah, it's, it's a general fund budget receipt. Okay. Uh, uh, when Mr. Smith talked to us about the cost recovery plan and the fees for services and so on, um, a couple of her park reservation fees are among <coughs> that long schedule that's uh, that's in your uh, Wednesday packet. Got it. Okay, new guy question. I apologize for that. Yeah, uh, I, I wasn't sure what the what the question was. Sure. So thank you. Well, the other question is. Um, looking at the number of reservation requests, I wonder if there was any thought put into automating that system, perhaps having an online reservation system and payment system to help make that process more efficient, both for the department and for the end user so that people can uh, you know, easily access our parks and make those reservations. Councilmember Gonzalez, we can certainly look into that. Uh, in uh, years past, we've we asked the people to come in and actually have a physical signature so that we can uh, talk to them about the different requirements involved in uh, getting a reservation. But we can certainly look into that, and that's a good point. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Parks indeed make life better. I had the privilege of uh, attending a seminar where we focused on economic development this past weekend and there was this renewed interest in investing dollars in parks and recreation just knowing its impact on economic development. Thank you very much for all that you're doing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Water, water everywhere. Mr. Cianello. Mr. Metters is filling in for a parent who's, I think, taking his child on a tour of colleges. That's right. I believe he's somewhere back east. Um, he may be getting in town soon, next couple days or so. Good afternoon, Honorable Mayor, City Council members. My name is Jason Metters. I'm the Water Resources Director. With me, I have Joe Navarro. He's our business manager for our department. He does an excellent job uh, assisting and preparing our budget every year, and so it's an honor for us to be here uh, pre presenting our budget for you uh, this afternoon. Here you have the organizational chart for our department. We have two divisions. We have the Agricultural Water Division and then the Domestic Water Division. The Agricultural Water Division is responsible for operating the Kern River seven days a week, 365 days per year. We also keep uh, records on the river for the Kern River Water Interest and also the Water Master. And then we also um, maintain the city's water rights for future, uh, current and future citizens of Bakersfield. The domestic water division uh, operates our domestic water system, which has about 45,000 connections. And then new to our organizational chart this year is the Kern River Groundwater Sustainability Agency, uh, which is a result of the, current, uh, the uh, Groundwater Sustainability, Sustainability Management Act which uh, was passed a few years ago. And so this is a, a new uh, responsibility on our department. And so we've put it on our organizational chart this year. Here's a list of accomplishments over the past fiscal year. We've uh, continued to administer the uh, joint uh, stormwater management plan with the county. 
We've completed upgrades on uh, a lot of our wells. Uh, we rehabilitated some of them and added column extensions uh, so that we can pump at lower groundwater uh, table depths. Uh, we've also added a new domestic water well and brought that online. Uh, we've continued to work with the uh, Bureau of Reclamation to process an application for a six mile multi-use path along the Frank Kern Canal. We've also cleaned over 130 drainage basins uh, through our contractor, Sierra Construction. We've installed about 110 service lines within our domestic water service area. Those are actually replacements that we did where we replaced old leaky poly lines with new copper lines. And then we replaced about 100 concrete panels in the Kern River Canal this past year. We've continued with our water conservation efforts uh, this past year. In May 2016, the State Water Resources Control Board updated our water conservation re regulations th through the state and uh, allowed the city and, and Cal Water and other purveyors in the state to self-certify a conservation target. We selected 9%. And from June 2016 to March 2017, we actually uh, achieved a 17.4 uh, water reduction usage within our domestic water service area. So we improved on the 9%. And then in April of uh, this year, April 7th, the governor ended the state of emergency for the drought and that lifted the 9% for our residents. However, due to the lower uh, groundwater levels that we're seeing, the historic low groundwater levels, and then also the uncertainty of the future water supplies, we're encouraging residents to keep saving and conserving water and be cognizant of our uh, water supply challenges that we have. We've continued to receive um, updates from the City Sourced app where people can go online and report uh, water wasting and report leaks in our system. Uh, the, the Water Resources Department contributed to a, a water conservation radio campaign uh, where we partnered with the uh, Water Association of Kern County and other local purveyors. And that streamed from May 2016 through November 2016. And we're planning on doing that again this year. Here's a list of some of the uh, residential rebate programs that we offer uh, through Cal Water. Uh, so we, we have high efficiency toilet rebates, clothes washers, smart irrigation controllers, and then we offer uh, free conservation kits for residents who request them that are in our water service area. And so they can access that through Cal Water's website shown there on the screen. And then we also uh, have continued to offer uh, free sprinkler nozzles through our voucher program to our residents in our domestic water service area. Uh, we offer about 25 uh, sprinkler nozzles for free for residents who request them through the Cal Water website. Here's a couple photos of some capital improvement projects that we've done over the past year. Uh, one of the major projects that we had was an emergency uh, project where we equipped five domestic water wells with arsenic treatment, shown on the left-hand side. Uh, those two vessels are steel vessels that are connected to our, our well sites, and they contain ferric oxide media, which removes the arsenic from the water prior to discharging it into our system. This particular well is located in the vicinity of Brimhall Road in Juetta. And then on the right, you see uh, CBK 54, some before and after pictures there for our newest well. And that's in the vicinity of Old River Road and, uh, and just north, north of Harris Road in a neighborhood. Um, that's a typical water well building that we construct on our system. Um, this well will provide water for existing and future residents of Bakersfield. And here's our proposed budget for the fiscal uh, year 2017-2018. Uh, some highlights here, under ag water, the operating budget is going down by about $568,000, uh, a decrease of about 12% due to uh, a decrease in legal costs and power costs. And then the domestic water uh, capital improvements, we're proposing an increase of about 35% or $350,000. And that's due to a proposed CIP project, which would be a building expansion for our, uh, our office building. I'll talk later uh, more about that. So our department total budget will increase by about 
Here's our proposed staffing complement. We're uh, proposing to remain flat for next fiscal year. Uh, we went from 28 to 29 positions uh, last year when we added a civil engineer three to our staffing. Here's our proposed budget for the Ag Water Division, about $4.7 million. Um, operation and maintenance expenses account for approximately 45% of the budget. This category includes maintenance of all river control structures, city-owned canals, and operation of the Kern River all year long. And then outside services, um, that includes um, funding to pay for annual contracts for repairs, such as concrete repair within the canals, earthwork, to assist in river repairs and sump maintenance and other required services and interfund charges uh, pay to pay the cost for three parkway maintainers for weed control spraying and over 330 drainage sumps within our city limits. And here's a picture of our estimated revenues for the Ag Water Division. Uh, contract water sales, about 1.9 million. That's for water sales to uh, local ag districts that we've, we're um, anticipating having this upcoming year. Spreading facilities include revenues generated from various fees associated with the city's 2,800-acre recharge facility. And then miscellaneous revenues, that includes a combination of various sub-accounts like sales to the water, uh, cow water water treatment plants for delivery to their system and, and well as, our, as well as ours, and then sales to our irrigation customers. It also includes revenues um, for other districts using the ag, city's ag facilities, such as pumps in the city's 2,800 acres, income that we receive from leasing Isabella storage, and then water transportation fees. And then lastly, uh, cost recoveries are uh, from other districts that reimburse the city for operation and maintenance of jointly owned canals via uh, clearing accounts. And then here's a snapshot of the domestic water division. The um, proposed budget is uh, $23.4 million. Uh, O&M contractor, about $7.2 million is our contract with Cal Water to operate and maintain our domestic water system. For power costs, uh, about 3.9 million. That's to operate our 53 um, you know, domestic water wells within the system. And then we have water supply programs, which is um, where we purchase water from uh, the Henry C. Garnett treatment plant, which is ID4's treatment plant, and then also Cal Water's North Garden treatment plant, as well as uh, we purchase uh, recharge uh, in some of Kern Delta's canals to assist in uh, recharging the groundwater for our domestic water wells. And then under operations at $3 million, that includes uh, legal fees, uh, our annual contracts for service line replacements, and then also our uh, annual contract for our, um, our well maintainer. And then here's our uh, domestic water division estimated revenues, about 24.1 million. A majority of those comes from our residential and commercial customers. And then public agencies makes up um, sales, which include parks and school districts. Over the past 40 years, our system's grown quite a bit. Back in 1977, when we purchased it from the, we purchased the Ag Ash Water District. The city's population was about 82,000 people, and we served about 15% of that population. Now the city's population is about 384,000 and we serve about 38% of the, um, the residents and the city limits. Here's a map of the water purveyor areas. Uh, the light green is city of Bakersfield. Our uh, domestic area is bound by Stein Road on the west, Snow Road on the north, and Taft Highway on the south. Staff would like to update the City Council on the upcoming state regulation that will impact the City's water system significantly. 1T3 trichloropropane, or TCP, as it is known, is a groundwater contaminant. It's found in uh, groundwater within California, especially in the Central Valley and in the Bakersfield area. In late spring, early summer, it is expected that the State Water Resources Control Board 
uh, or the DDW will most likely adopt a new maximum contaminant level for TCP. Uh, after January of 2018, um, we're going to have to do many actions what could in, which could include wellhead treatment for numerous wells, um, long-term treatment, possibly some new wells, and uh, we'll incur other planning and costs uh, associated with the TCP impact. Uh, as you may recall, at your May 2010 uh, meeting, the City Council adopted an emergency resolution initiating initiating a um, emergency TCP mitigation project, and that was to ensure that the city continues to deliver water that meets state standards after the January 2018 uh, deadline. Wanted to talk a little bit about project funding. Initial project costs will be funded uh, with Water Resources Department fund balance, and staff has been working with the finance director to secure additional funding required to complete the project. Um, some of the major project costs include the procurement of vessels and granular activated carbon, or GAC. The picture there uh, to the right shows these vessels uh, that contain this, this carbon that treats the water and removes the TCP from the water prior to us delivering it out to the system. We're going to need these vessels at multiple of our well sites, many, many of our well sites. And so we're in the process of procuring those vessels and we're going to be bringing this to city council here in the near future. We'll also have to um, add a design build contractor to the city's team to complete this project in a timely fashion. And we realize that um, with the installation of these vessels and other um, improvements we're going to need on our city system, uh, we're going to realize an increased O&M cost uh, that we'll have to pay uh, forevermore on our system. So ultimately, we're anticipating that a sizable rate increase will be needed for the city's domestic water system due to the new debt service incurred as a result of this project. The city is involved in litigation with the chemical companies that manufacture the TCP in an effort to recover the cost and expenses for the TCP treatment and its related impacts. Staff also wants to point out to the council that the state has severely or had, has had several delays in adopting and implementing the new MCL for TCP, but has given the water purveyors within the state a short timeline to bring their system into compliance. This delay has resulted in complicating cash flow and the bonding necessary for the city to complete its project. So as this project moves forward, we will keep the council up to date on this. Here's a comparison of the city's current water rates. Uh, shows the average monthly water bills for a few of the um, local water purveyors. The city of Bakersfield is shown on the left. It's among the lowest. Uh, this is based on an av average uh, usage of 2,800 cubic feet per month for a three-quarter inch meter. Um, I should note that we may see some of these average monthly water bills increase as the TCP mitigation is implemented on other systems as well as the cities. And then this is a comparison of the city's average monthly water bill with other similar sized cities uh, within the state. Uh, again, we're among the lowest. Here's the city's proposed capital improvement projects. For this upcoming fiscal year, I mentioned the uh, proposed building expansion um, that we're proposing or we're estimating may cost up to $700,000. And so um, we're proposing it because over the last 10 years, uh, staffing levels have increased at the city's water resources department, as have the city's responsibility, the, the department's responsibilities. In 2007, we took on two additional fire personnel in our department, and then in 2010, we had took on an additional engineer tech. And then, as I mentioned, in 2016, a civil engineering three position was added. Also, our duties have increased. We are now involved in the uh, Kern, um, the sustainability um, agency, Kern River Groundwater Sustainability Agency. Uh, the drought has increased our monitoring and activities as far as, uh, you know, trying to make sure everybody's reducing the water and we're getting more reports of water waste, that sort of thing we're having to address. And then our city system continues to grow. 
And so those are just a handful of items. Um, while we see maybe in the future we'll have to add additional staff possibly, and, and we think now's the appropriate, appropriate time to do the building expansion. So we'd like to show the council a short video that uh, was taken recently by the fire department for uh, the city water department. It is an aerial uh, video that shows the Kern River and the city's 2,800 acre recharge area. And it, it's quite an amazing video. And it just, it shows the large amount of water that's on our, within our, our river channel and the 2,800 acres. And it, it's just a historic year and it's, it's a wonderful video. So please enjoy. I think this is by, um, that's by Allen Road there. This is near our water bank areas. I think that's actually Brenda Mesa's ponds on the left there, and that was the river channel. And this is the 2,800 acres here. That's the bike path right in the middle. Clung Weir, that's out at our 2,800 acre recharge area. So with that, I'll take any questions that you may have. Vice Mayor. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Meadows. Uh, yeah, I love those pictures of, of the water in the river and the, and the recharge, and it's uh, been a great year. Uh, first, I want to, you mentioned the Frank Kern application, and, and we're close on that, and I appreciate you're working that over the years, and uh, hopefully we can close that deal this year uh, with them and get a permit to uh, increase the recreational opportunities within Bakersfield. Uh, thing I've noticed over the years, and, and maybe you could think about, uh, historically, you know, you've had the domestic water and the ag water division, and I'm not sure the ag water division is a correct name anymore. We, let's look at maybe, you know, that's our Kern River division or something like that. Uh, I know we used to sell a lot of water to ag, and, and that's not the case anymore. So if we could think about that. Um, also, Ms. Hoover mentioned uh, the cost of the spray parks and because of the water. And you mentioned income from canal companies because of recharge. And I don't know if it makes sense, but, you know, all the water from spray parks goes to recharge because it goes into the retention basins, uh, and maybe we could look at giving Park some credit for that recharge since we're paying for recharge other places. Okay. And your purveyor map, way up in the northwest, uh, we've talked about this before, but I, I don't think all of that is future cow water and, and whatever is possible. I would, and my constituents would like that to be future city water, so we can look at changing that map uh, as much as we can. I would appreciate it. Sure, thank, thank you. you. And appreciate the work. Thanks, Vice Mayor. Councilmember Parlier. Thank you, Mayor. Nice presentation, Jason. Love the video. Thank you. Um, with the video, do we have a read yet as far as our compliance with Sigma or the GSA as far as our efforts on recharging out there, like a percentage of how we're doing so far? Um, I don't know if I understand your question. Well, with all the water we have, I mean, it, <laughs> We're looking at recharging our, our basin. Do we have a read on what those percentages are yet, how we're doing with the, you know, our banner year? Um, you know, I think it's been a dry period. We've had several dry years, and so this, although this, this water year is great, I think it's just a small step towards getting to where we used to be. Um, I think water levels are coming up. We've, we've monitored some of the wells out there and some of the water levels are coming up by 40, 60 feet. And so we're doing well, but I don't know if we have actual numbers as far as, you know, how, how close we're getting back into balance. It's been a long period where a lot of people have pumped a lot of water out of there and, and we need a few wet years to kind of get back to normal. Do you have any idea, let's say at the end of this year? Well, I guess my question is, could you come back 
uh, even if it's in closed session, I don't care. And just kind of give us a general read, uh, you know, maybe before the next, you know, year. I don't know if it's going to be wet or dry or what, but just kind of give us a general read of if you have that information of how we're doing so we can kind of maybe project how we should should act to. If, if I could, uh, Councilmember mm -hmm. Parlier, uh, one of the major activities of the, uh, the various uh, GSAs that are being formed, and we're in the North Korean GSA, is to contract uh, for uh, professional services to do uh, exactly what you're describing. Um, however, that's going to take about a year to three years. Uh, there'll be an initial phase where it's kind of in rough form, and then it will eventually evolve into a more finite form. Um, because of the number of water districts and the complexity of the information throughout the basin, um, it is a, a, a very challenging calculation to make requiring 21 or so agencies' participation. So we will get that for you when we can, um, but I wanted you to know you're asking for a, a mountain. <laughs> yeah, but that's fine. I'm, I'm not asking for the mountain, more of a molehill. But, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not uh, one of the members on the water board, and um, so I'm, I'm sure some of this information is presented to you and to Bob, but um, if just a little update at some point, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Sure. Council Member Sullivan. Thank you. Good, good presentation, mm -hmm. Jason. Thank you. Uh, you know, I'm noticing your last name, and that's an important um, name in Bakersfield's history. Are you any relation to our former uh, Clarence Metter mayor? Clarence Metter? No, no. Uh huh. Is it spelled the same way? No, it's a little bit different. I see. Yeah, I think it's a little bit different okay. spelling. Well, yeah. I'll remember that. Yeah. That's different then. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Public Works, Mr. Fiddler and team. Good afternoon, Honorable Mayor and Council Members. I'm Nick Fiddler, Public Works Director. Today I have the uh, privilege to present to you the 1718 uh, Operating and Capital Improvement Program budget. To my right, you might have uh, noticed Denitza Romo. She was previously within the manager's office. We did take her, and she's been a great asset to our department. Also behind me, you see uh, Ted Wright, Assistant Public Works Director, and Georgina Lorenzi, the assistant to the Public Works Director. I also owe a great round to Georgina for her assistance in helping prepare this presentation and the operating budget. The Public Works Department is comprised of 11 different divisions. Uh, as you can see, we also oversee the Bakersfield Municipal Airport. The, unfortunately, I could not put all the sections underneath the divisions because it would take up the whole wall behind you. So, This, uh, gra this slide represents the historic uh, staffing levels for the department. As you can see, for fiscal year 17-18, we're proposing one additional staff. This staff re uh, reflects the addition of one solid waste equipment operator. This position will serve to accommodate continued growth of the city-operated residential areas. If the, oops, sorry, go ahead. This slide is the operating budget by all funds. The uh, department's operating budget is $114,889,000. Million, million it's an uh, increase of about 4.3% overall from last year's budget. The uh, personnel uh, uh, fund is up 4.1 percent. That is mainly attributed to the increase in health care and PERS rates. The operating budget is up 3 percent, and that is primarily due to the uh, refuse enterprise fund, um, majority for the uh, increase to the haulers contract for the uh, contract haulers and the solid waste refuse fund. Capital outlay is up 16%, primarily due to new equipment pieces for all departments within the city of Bakersfield. The operating budget by funding source, the general fund again up 1%, primarily due to 
PERS and healthcare. Same with the development services and TRIP local match uh, up, up 5.1 percent also due to the PERS and healthcare. As I uh, mentioned before, the enterprise fund, the 4.8 percent is primarily due to the increase to the contract haulers agreement and the equipment fund is for both replacement and new vehicles for all departments. The Amtrak is up 19.7 percent. That is uh, fully reimbursed through the state. Uh, the 19.7, the increase is due to some additional track work that's needed for that facility. Again, that's all reimbursed through the state. This slide uh, represents the uh, funding by um, where it comes from, the different divisions. Solid waste, obviously, the, the largest of uh, all divisions uh, is at 48 million. Then the general fund is at 26 million. And then wastewater, 15 million. All other funding sources equate to about 25 million. This slide represents by division. Uh, please note that the engineering division actually represents, or the engineering section of the pie there represents four different divisions, traffic engineering, construction engineering, subdivision engineering, and design engineering. So th this slide represents our uh, funding sources by different fund types for local road and maintenance and right-of-way improvements. Just to note, we do anticipate to increase this uh, uh, amount at mid-year. Uh, we do expect to receive additional funds through SB1 and we'll come back to the council to appropriate those additional funds when they are uh, re um, received from the state. Proposed rate increases. We do have a, a proposed rate increase for refuse rates. We're proposing a 2 percent rate increase, again primarily due to the 2.1 percent haulers contract, and this is based off of the uh, uh, consumer price index. Uh, the rates will go from uh, roughly $195 to $200 annually. There are no proposed sewer rate increases for fiscal year 17-18. However, we do have, we are in year four of five for the commercial sewer surcharge rates. Uh, this is uh, the fourth year of five where we're uh, adjusting to the characteristics of the flow between residential and commercial flows. Sewer connection fee, the last update to this fee was done in July of 2010. Staff will propose a five-year phase-in period to update connection fees, basically going from $4,000 per connection to $5,000, so we'll be increasing $200 a year for the five-year period. This will come to you at council meeting this Wednesday. Moving into accomplishments for the TRIP program, the construction of Rosedale Highway, this project opened in September of 2016. Uh, State Route 178 widening, we recently had the ribbon cutting ceremony on May 2017. And then State Route 99 Auxiliary Lane at Rosedale Highway, uh, th that also opened on May 2017. I don't think anybody wanted to run across the road for a ribbon cutting on that one though. Again, with uh, TRIP accomplishments, construction in progress, the Beltway Operational Improvements Project. This is to be completed in summer of 2018. And then the Centennial Quarter Phase 1, the Kern River Bridges. This uh, has previously been awarded. We will be having the groundbreaking ceremony uh, next week, June 14th. I hope that you all are able to come to uh, participate with that. Uh, trip 1718 uh, Action Plan. Continue projects currently under construction, and then the Centennial Corridor begin construction, phase two, sound walls, sewer relocation, and local streets. These are all within the West Park area. We plan to have those out later this year uh, into construction fall. Um, future phases, these are all dependent on available funding, the Bell Terrace Operational Improvement Project. This project has already been designed. It has uh, received Caltrans approval. So Right now, we're just seeking additional funding to, to uh, put that project out to bid. We're, we're looking for various grant opportunities. 
the main line connection between Westside Parkway and State Route 58. We're over 95% design complete. Again, uh, have our um, reaching out for various grant opportunities on the project as well. And then the State Route 99 interchange connection, that's where the major ramps come into the 99 and 58. Uh, those are also at a 95% design level and expect to have those ready by the end of this year. Continuing with the 1718 action plan, continue 24th Street improvements. We uh, recently awarded the five, uh, last five homes on the south side, uh, demolition contracts for those. The contractor will be getting construction within the next week or two. Um, to remove those structures, there will be, de will be down to one additional house that will need to be removed, which the property owner is vacating this month. And then we plan to begin construction of phase one, which is the north side sound walls. Those projects are 100% designed. Uh, we, will we will be putting that project out to bid later this summer and going into construction fall this year. And then same with phase two, roadway widening from Kern River Bridge to M Street. Those pro that project is uh, anticipated to be complete design later this uh, fall and out to const uh, bid fall this year. The uh, Truxton and Oak operational improvements. Construction is anticipated to start late this summer, early fall. The, pro the plans are for this project are 100% complete. We are currently working through the right-of-way acquisition process and we have a, a few outstanding permits that we're uh, trying to receive. Uh, Hegman flyover, um, the design is at 95% complete. Moving into the engineering division accomplishments, the capital improvement program projects completed, uh, several ADA improvements, both uh, uh, two bus stop programs, uh, PT Mizia and TDA, uh, Sports Village Phase 3, various improvements. We could, we, you could see uh, on the slides we had a um, shade structure in the entry monument and the top lot improvements have all been installed along with the lake improvement. Uh, continuing with engineering accomplishments, Fire Station 8 remodel. I had the uh, open house a week or two ago. Very nice facility, turned out very nice. Uh, pavement rehabilitation, two uh, street segments, Brundage Lane and Ash Road. Uh, street improvements in uh, three different locations, and then two different sewer lift station improvements, which are currently in progress. Uh, continuing with accomplishments, miscellaneous improvements, MLK park lighting installation, new traffic signal and lighting synchronization projects, uh, two new locations, Snow Road at Juetta and Snow Road at Norris Road, and then the new signs for the parking garage at 18th and I streets. The Amtrak solar installation and parking lot project started construction two or three weeks ago. That project is moving along nicely. And then Sports Village Phase 3, we're continuing with sports field lighting of the uh, northeasterly soccer fields and then the sport field, uh, major sport field and the landscaping. Uh, pavement rehabilitation at the following three locations, Wilson Road, Gosford Road, California Avenue. California Avenue actually started construction today. Uh, you'll see a, a long, long line of traffic, so please try to avoid that location if you can. Our engineering and development highlights, inspection services. We provided 56 tract and parcel maps. Uh, 1,363 street use permits, that was for calendar year 2016. 11 notice of completions, those are for uh, tract developments. And then 24 warranty releases. This is showing an uptick again, as Ms. Kitchen had said, in the uh, development community. Engineering 17-18 uh, action plan, continue to advance the city's city, uh, capital improvement plan continue submitting applications for federal state funding and grants, continue to incorporate ADA transition plan and complete street policies into projects and continue to improve service to development community. Our general services accomplishments, remove graffiti from 11,000 sites, 
Over 850 lane miles striped on city streets, over 2,400 signs replaced, installed, and maintained by general services, and responded to over 2,800 street light service requests. General services accomplishments. The Bakersfield Police Department Communication Center expansion, expansion, currently remodeling the Disaster Operations Center to be a part of the Communication Center. We replaced the light fixtures at the BPD. We're retrofitted with LED lighting. Bakersfield Municipal Airport uh, placed over airport, sorry, uh, placed over 45,000 cubic yards of wood chips for dust control funded by San Joaquin Valley Air Pollution Control District. This 45,000 cubic yards was a relief to our green waste facility where we have a mountain of, a mountain of wood chips backing up there. General Services Fiscal Year 17-18 Action Plan, review and pursue energy efficient projects for city facilities, continue to install energy efficiency LED lighting for street lights and facilities, continue to complete ADA improvements for uh, city facilities. Picture below is one of the hallways within the BPD LED retrofit. Streets accomplishments, they resurfaced, reconstructed 70 lane miles of city streets, that's with their own city forces. They sealed 115 street miles with surface penetrating sealer. The sealer helps prolong the life of the pavement. They implemented the pavement management system that helps us prioritize all of our, our streets. Installed the SCADA system on all city sewer and storm lift stations. The SCADA system has been very beneficial to the city. It's helped us prevent at least three to four potential overflows to the lift station systems. Constructed new curb, gutter, and sidewalk in CDBG eligible areas. Again, with streets accomplishments, constructed the parking lot and installed sidewalk, sewer, storm drain lines at Mesa Marin Complex and the Bakersfield Sports Village Complex. Streets 1718 Action Plan, continue to preserve and maintain city streets by utilizing the pavement management system, continue to work in CDBG areas with new funding, continue work on retrofitting existing sewer and storm list stations, and continue video inspection of sewer mains for maintenance repairs. Equipment accomplishments. Continue the city's commitment to clean air, monitored fuel efficiency and alternative fuel market trends to include in equipment specifications. We replaced aging equipment with low emissions options. Their action plan is continue to convert more of the, of the city's fleet to clean air vehicles. Currently, there are 89 LNG and CNG vehicles in the city fleet as of December 2016. We've used 741,000 gallons of LNG and 57,000 gallons of CNG used in the 2016 calendar year. The equipment piece on the, on the left is our brand new striping machine, very high tech and it's a very nice uh, addition to our general services division and then on the right is our new paving machine and it, it will help uh, the efficiency of our streets division to pave a nice clean mat and we really appreciate all your guys' support for these new pieces of equipment. Our wastewater accomplishments, we produced 182 million gallons of tertiary treated water. We re rehabilitated several major facility components. The, as you can see in the pictures, these are very uh, intricate plants, uh, several pumps and equipment out there that need to be maintained on a regular basis. And then we have energy created by wastewater division. You can see the, the amount of um, uh, kilowatt hours that we've produced for both plants. This really helps offset our PG&E usage at these plants. We, can, we expect to continue to improve upon those um, kilowatt hours as we uh, refine the solar and the cogen operations of both plants. Wastewater 1718 Action Plan to continue to explore possible tertiary water treatment expansion at Plant 3. Currently, all the water that we produce at Plant 3 is utilized at Bakersfield Sports Village and all the uh, landscaping around the plant and also some of the operation procedures within the plant itself. We will be rehabilitating the grit chamber and the trickling filter recirculation pumps at Plant 2. This is a multi-year project. There are several pumps that will be replaced over the, over the uh, course of time. 
and then we're re rehabilitating two primary clarifiers and replace four digester and mixing pumps at plant three. Solid waste accomplishments, the anti-litter efforts, 511 cleanups, approximately 9,000 vol volunteers over the course of the year, and 234,000 pounds of litter collected through these anti-litter efforts. The homeless crew efforts, they had 52 workers weekly, four crews litter on litter per day, and they also assisted in the spreading of wood chips on the West Side Parkway. As you can see from, uh, from the Great American, the pictures below, the Great American cleanup was a great success. This was held on April 22nd, and you can probably spot a couple council members and a mayor in the picture in the lower right. And solid waste accomplishments, we did a uh, complete first phase of our compost autom automation. This was part of the uh, Air District grant that we received. We we're starting to move material via electric conveyor versus diesel trucks. This is reducing air emissions and also conserving 66% of the water usage uh, in processing the materials out there at the Green Waste Facility. One of the major challenges that we've uh, encountered over the last couple of years, encountered over the last couple of years, is the uh, Delano Energy used to provide revenue of approximately $600,000 per year for wood chips. Due to the closure of the Delano Energy, the city now pays to dispose of the wood chips at other outlets. Where before Delano Energy would come and pick up the material from our site, we are now having to haul it off at our cost to, to other facilities to dispose of these chips. We have uh, some local short-term projects that will use about half the wood chips. Uh, one of the projects you saw earlier was the West Side Parkway. We used uh, the wood chips on the West Side Parkway to, to rechip it, and also the airport. Um, these have been given us some short-term outlets to reduce the amount of wood chips that we have on the green, um, Greenway site. In addition, some of the development has also taken upon themselves to take some of our wood chips to help mitigate some of the dust control measures. Um, you'll see that the commons on um, Brimhall and Coffee had started laying wood chips in that area to prevent some of the uh, blowing sand and debris. Some long-term solutions. Uh, we've had some small-scale elect small electric generation companies come to us and uh, uh, do some presentations on the use of burning the wood chips to create a, an energy. And then on a large-scale soil um, amendment to the farm, we're working with the contract uh, the farmer to potentially spread the wood chips on the city farm to help uh, reduce the wood chips. Um, there, there may be some future council appropriation, funding appropriation may be required as a result of these contracts and continual handling of the wood chip challenge. The Solid Waste 1718 Action Plan is to continue the anti-litter efforts, uh, develop new uses for surplus wood chips, and continue outreach for commercial recycling. You, the picture below is the Bakersfield Homeless Center crews uh, spreading wood chips along the West Side Parkway. You'll notice that that's the uh, at Callaway um, on-ramp. Moving into the 17-18 Capital Improvement Program budget, the proposed budget for 17-18 is 70, roughly $74 million. Uh, Public Works is uh, $69 million, 69516 million million. And there's uh, uh, $2.1 million for recreation and parks and $1.9 for uh, water resources. Both of those were mentioned in their presentations. Street improvements, uh, ADA improvements, street improvements at College Avenue and in Stein Road. And as was discussed earlier, the CDBG areas and then uh, a portion to our Streets Division pavement maintenance. Uh, again, anticipate a mid-year adjustment and include new funding from the SB1 funds. Uh, pavement rehabilitation uh, at the following five locations. And then we're also part of the California Avenue reconstruction. We have a project to do media improvements on California from Oak Street to G Street to enhance, uh, to remove the existing green asphalt and enhance the pavement with a, a stamped concrete and some um, improved landscaping through that area. 
Continuing along, traffic signal and related improvements. We have a new signal at McKee Road and Stein Road, and then Man uh, Panama Lane at Mountain Ridge Drive and Hosking Avenue at Hughes Lane. We have uh, pe uh, pedestrian countdown timers at multiple locations. I believe this will complete all the intersections through the city. And then autoscope vehicle detection cameras. This will replace some of our existing outdated autoscope vehicle detections that are no longer supported. So, and then uh, moving into a bridge preventative maintenance program and then the bridge retrofit of Manor Street over the Kern River. Sewer improvements, we have a list station rehabilitation at Hosking Avenue and Acres Road, and then storm drain improvements, lift, uh, three lift stations, uh, rehabilitations, Ming Avenue, the Police Pistol Range, and Tevis Ranch. The two, Ming Avenue and Police Pistol Range, are for design only this year, and there will be construction the following. Continuing along with storm and sewer and storm improvements, Ongoing program to rehabilitate city sewer and storm lift stations. Uh, we did receive a grant from Cal OES for backup generators, one at Beach Park storm lift station and the other at uh, the pistol range uh, along Truxton Avenue. Um, continued facility improvement projects. We do have a project to in, uh, improve the police pistol range itself. Uh, the, Bakersfield Municipal Airport, we have some miscellaneous improvements for hangar door rehabilitation, miscellaneous repairs, and the ALP update, and the AGIS. These are, uh, those are all federal funded. Um, the ALP and the AGIS are federal funded. Park improvements, we're continuing uh, improvements with Bakersfield Sports Village, They're moving into phase four funding for phase four, and then Mason Marin Sports uh, Complex continued funding for phase two. Wastewater treatment plants, we're replacing four digester mixing pumps at plant three, rehabilitating two primary clarifiers at plant three, replace two variable frequency drives at plant two, and then rehabilitate four recirculation transfer pumps at plant two. We are adding a component to the green waste compost screening facility to meet new state regulations. They're really cracking down on how much debris is within the compost, so we had to add another screen to get to a 99% level of uh, non-contamination within, uh, within that compost product. This is a slide uh, presentation of the Centennial Corridor we did uh, using the fire drone. Um, did a little um, uh, travel through the corridor. You just started off at real. We're heading uh, west and north. We'll be turning to the north right here and we'll be crossing over Stockdale Highway right now at New North Stein. I have to uh, compliment finance and property management for their efforts on this. They've been very instrumental in the demolition of all the homes. And uh, adding the wood chips to the uh, left behind spaces. We're currently putting in green, eight foot green screens to the properties that will be adjacent to the corridor until the ultimately walls can be placed. We're getting ready to cross over Morella Drive, which is right in the middle of West Park. There are um, a, just a, couple, a handful of homes that still require to be demolished. I believe we're down to one or two residential properties and three commercial properties that are still in the acquisition process. We'll be flying over the Citizens Bank right here, which is one of the properties that is still in the acquisition process. And if you look to the left real quick, you'll see that the active demo going on the two-story building right next to Levitt's. Now we're coming up onto Commerce and just passing Health South. We're tying into the Truxton Loop Ramp. And this area right here that you're seeing is phase one. We'll be going, moving into construction this summer to build the bridges right between these two uh, ramps. It will be the mainline extension over uh, to the south of the Kern River and also building the um, Mohawk off ramp. Other projects that we're working on in the TRIP program are the Truxton Avenue uh, uh, operational improvement project, the widening uh, Brighton Park sound wall, and all phase, future phases of the Centennial Corridor. 
This completes my presentation. If you have any questions. Thank you, Mr. Fiddler. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Fiddler. Public Works is exciting. Always you get to build stuff and yeah. get to see. And tear Which, down now. Yeah, yeah tear down. you do both, yes. Uh, my comments are kind of random because as you went, I, it made me think of things. Uh, the, you showed the parking garage and, and we've made great improvements there. And uh, I thought about the uh, solid waste and the sanitation and, and I know that we have worked on and we, and we clean those trash bins, but we still have problems with homeless going through them and spreading stuff everywhere. And I think it's time we, we look seriously at, at locking those gates. And I know the business people, you know, they, we lose the key, we don't know the combination, but something's gotta be worked out so we don't have trash around there all the time. And I think that's a, a location that is important to us. It's, it's the highest pedestrian place we have downtown. We're attracting people to the garage and I think we need to keep that clean. Uh, Rosedale Highway finished and completed and uh, just went down it the other day and it looks great and it operates very good and I appreciate that. And then you, you mentioned I'm on Kern Cog and, and it, Aaron Akimi always reinforces that, you know, the faster we get projects done and we're ready and we go after other people's money and so I just want to reinforce that. That's important and we can move forward on other projects. 24th Street, we had talked about you showed the picture and, and we talked about landscaping and stuff and during those conversations we had talked about signage and branding on the area of the one-way streets and then it got sidetracked and, and I don't know where that ever went and if we're getting as we move forward it, I'd like to know what we ended up doing on that. The pavement management system I'd asked one time about whether or not we had posted that map on the website so that all citizens could look at and see what the situation of all our streets are and I, I don't know that that ever happened or I don't know how to I'll, find that. I'll have to follow up. Okay. Um, you mentioned complete streets and that, that's important to me that we all new streets and rehab streets that we think about all users, pedestrians, bicyclists and automobiles. Um, you got a new striping machine and, and I was thinking today it's been about five years since we striped the bike path and I don't know if that's on the list but if you could look and see if that could be done this year. We actually have a, a, a major segment to resurface on the bike path. I believe it's in the area between Coffee Road and uh, Stockdale and those limits. So we'll be doing that as well. Okay, and if we could restripe the whole thing when we do that, that would be great. Uh, really appreciate the letter efforts of the sanitation department. I mean, that just changes the feel of the whole city, I think. Um, and the, I've talked to Mr. Barnes a couple times about the small scale electric generation idea for the wood chips and that would be great if that would work out. And so if, I'd like for you to look at that as much as possible. I appreciate that. Great work, appreciate it, thank you. Councilmember Sullivan. Sorry for all my comments, but uh, <clears throat> Nick, you mentioned the avoiding California Avenue. That's a very helpful t yeah. tip. Uh, um, and wondering what period of time will construction be on that? Is it just the work day? It, it, correct. We are uh, put it in construction immediately following the graduation or the ending of school, so we uh, miss the BHS yeah. school season. So we are working days. We're not working weekends, and uh, but we anticipate to be complete mid-August with that project. Okay, so between eight and five, yeah. basically. Correct. Okay, that's that's helpful. Um, and you mentioned the the uh, the the red stamping the concrete stamping, that's going to be beautiful. Is that, are you intending to have the red stamping? You know, I don't know the detail of what the colored stamp is offhand, but we are removing the green asphalt and putting in a, a stamped board. That had looked very tacky for a long time. Yeah. And if the cost is the same, you know, with with putting in, because the, the, the stamping, that's a pretty, uh, quality, I'll put quality uh, upgrade, and nothing looks better than the red. So would you look into that? And hopefully it wouldn't be the, the, 
the asphalt look. I wouldn't think that. And even the, the, the I can't think of anything that would look as nice or, or better than the, the red stamping. Um, and you mentioned the over that, um, the drone uh, um, trail was just wonderful. And it has been amazing how everything now is cleared, ready for the, you know, for the, the road improvement. That's going to be just very important to our long-term traffic plan and, and, uh, and system. Uh, and you mentioned over Stockdale. Is there actually going, will we actually be going over Stockdale? That's correct. It will go over Stockdale and California Avenue. So oh, wow. It, it will, I see. once it goes over Stockdale Highway, it will start to go below grade and then just south of uh, California Avenue, it comes back up and goes above grade. So it's below grade through a majority of West Park. Yeah, oh, that's amazing. <clears throat> and when that section in there, Nick, when are you um, tentatively expecting that to be underway and then complete? It's going to be built in multiple phases. Um, we're hoping to start the uh, sound walls, the street, uh, local street improvements, and the sewer improvements this year. And then once we complete those, we'll move into um, construction of the main line. We currently have grant applications in for the funding of that, that section of the roadway. Um, it, but it, the designs will be complete by the end of this year. And then we will be uh, continue to seek uh, various grants and funding opportunities. Okay, great. And I'm remembering now that it will be done in phases. Yeah. Uh, so that's uh, a lot of planning and certainly a lot of work to prepare for for that um, that section, so huge, huge benefit. Um, and yes, the, everything is looking so much better with the, with all the, the the litter being picked up. But at the same time, then I, I just realize, I thought many times, how what a shame that there is so much litter. I mean, how it you know when we hear of all that, when we see the the bags on the side of the road that have been picked up, and then you realize people are just just littering too casually, but it, they are, and uh, thankful that we have a way now to keep it picked up for a long time. It was just looking so bad. So, and it's a win-win for everybody. So, it's yeah. going to be wonderful long-term. Okay, good presentation. Thank you, Nick. Thank you. Councilmember Gonzalez. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to give a huge hoorah to Public Works Department. In my very short time as a councilman, I've been very impressed with how quickly uh, the department has responded to my multiple requests. You mentioned that uh, there were 2,800 streetlight service requests, and I just imagine half of them were probably mine <laughs> in Ward 2, but I appreciate you getting on it and all your team for working really hard to improve the condition of our entire city. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Fiddler. Mr. Tandy, anything further? Move to adjourn. We stand adjourned at 2.09.